What's good, what's good, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Mad Scientist 06. Welcome to the first episode of my new series called CFM State of the Mode. My man Hollywood Sports once said, Madden CFM is the ultimate NFL football simulation. Every time I think about this quote, it reminds me that there is much work EA must do to CFM mode to get it to a level where we feel it accurately and realistically simulates NFL football. Let's look at some stats. There are almost 9 million active CFM leagues on the Xbox One as of February 24th, 2018. There are almost 8 million CFMs on the PlayStation 4. So let's do the math here. Assuming that this information is correct, that I've pulled right from the game, we're talking about almost 17 million active CFMs. Now, this is just the number of active CFMs. You might ask just how many people are playing in these CFMs. I don't have this information, but let's assume there are an average of 20 members in each of these CFMs. If you multiply 17 million times 20, suffice to say, there are a lot of people playing Madden CFM. One thing is certain, the numbers are growing. Despite these growing numbers, Madden CFM has seen little improvements in recent years. It is for this reason I feel the mode justifies significant development attention, not just this year, but every year. In this series, I'll be discussing new ideas and improvements from progressive injuries to player salaries and compensation. Now in this video, the first of the series, I'm going to focus on team goals. Now you could really call these team or player goals because, or team and player goals, because in some cases they are. If you look at linemen, their goals are team rushing yards or team passing yards, depending. These are both team stats. Now if you look at wide receivers, individual catches are their goals. And with cornerbacks, individual interceptions, not team interceptions, are their goals. My man Tercel Wire is one of my favorite computer generated players in my CFM. Note that none of my wide receivers this season have met or exceeded their season goals. Tercel did the best and he just got about 20% or he's at the 20% mark of achieving his goal of 75 catches. Now, in fact, I have never ever in any CFM that I've played met or exceeded any wide receiver goals. And that begs a question. Now, my top rated wide receiver is University of Maryland grad Stefan Diggs. Shout out to the Turks. Because he is a starting wide receiver, his goal is 90 catches. Now, this goal is impossible for me to achieve. Why? One reason is I run a run focused ball control offense. This season, my team led the league in rushing yards. We also led the league in points per game at 32.3. And we also led the league in rushing touchdowns with 46. So we play on all pro six minute quarters. So don't crown me the greatest player of all time or any nonsense like that. But suffice to say, my team is a running oriented team. And we can never or have never met those wide receiver goals. So in addition to that, my team only completed 147 passes the entire season. So getting digs 90 of those 147 would be a challenge. Consider this. Wide receivers have a number of what I call production metrics. Every player does, right? These metrics the game could track and offer rewards for. So in addition to catches, there's also receiving yards, touchdowns, yards after catch, games played, average receiving yards, rushing touchdowns, Rushing yards, rushing attempts, rushing averages. If you wanted to add in a negative performance metric, you could do that too. You could look at maybe drops or fumbles. And maybe that metric would affect player goals somehow. Maybe the reduction of XP. Right, so there are a lot of things that can be done. And this single focus of one metric at a time is just something that I think we need to address. Now... Here's a mock-up of what I came up with, what team goals or individual goals could look like for Stefan Diggs. So instead of just looking at catch, in this mock-up we also have receiving yards, receiving touchdowns, rush touchdowns, and drops. So in this case, if he gets a certain amount of drops, he exceeds his limit, 
then he starts to lose XP. Another thing you'll notice is that right under his picture, you'll see a running total of the XP that he would earn if the season ended at this point. Interesting enough, my man Jerry Rice very rarely made over 90 catches. There are only four or five seasons where he did that. The rest were under that. And we're expecting Stefan Diggs to have Jerry Rice numbers as his goals. So there's something that needs to be adjusted there. Here's what I believe. I believe team goals or player goals should be customizable and scalable. Currently, the goals are one size fits all. This means the goals of a CFM playing on pro with 15 minute quarters are exactly the same with someone playing all Madden five minute quarters. The goals don't address any play styles. I would like to have run oriented goals to benefit my play style. People who like to pass should have pass oriented goals. Now, how could this work? One, the goals could be scaled automatically. The higher the quarter length settings in the CFM, the higher the goals could be. Also, the higher the difficulty level, the lower the goals could be. Now, the commissioner could also set the goals at the beginning of each season. Let's say he or she noticed that no wide receivers in the league met their goals. At that point, the goals for wide receivers could be scaled down on the fly. Another option would be to allow each coach to set their own goals. If you wanted to really get detailed, each player could have their own individual goals that could be set by the coaches or the commission. Let's say you were able to set the top four goals for each player. So for Stefan Diggs, I might go with catches, receiving yards, receiving touchdowns, and rushing touchdowns. Now for my man Sebastian Groves, who happens to be the fourth string wide receiver, I might select special team goals, such as kick return, kick return yards, kick return touchdowns, maybe even punt return yards and punt return touchdowns. You could also add an element of risk reward to the goals. For example, let's say you set your goals too high and didn't meet them. Then you would have to suffer in some way, maybe an attribute regression, confidence regression, or something like that. On the other hand, if you exceeded your goals, you would be rewarded. So the higher the risk, the higher reward. Let me know what you think. Just some thoughts from your boy. If you have any questions about what you heard, whether you agree or disagree, or have another idea, hit your boy up on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, or Instagram. The same name across all channels. Like, subscribe, share, retweet, tell your family. Thanks for watching. It's your boy, Mad Scientist. I'm out. Stay tuned to episode two.